Hello world, this is James Young. Welcome to Chats with Baba. Today our topic is going to be on who are you? Think about that. Who are you? The letters W A Y also spell the word way. So when we think about who are you and and uh, once we kind of get a handle on that it will also help to point the way so having said that let me bear with me for a moment i want to read you a definition that will serve as the uh, uh, the basis for our discussion today and this definition is taken from a book called when we ruled, R-U-L-E-D, when we ruled, that is when Africans ruled the world. So this book, it, it says here, now this is the question, what you do for yourself depends on what you think of yourself. And what you think of yourself depends on what you know of yourself. And what you know of yourself depends on what you have been told. Let that marinate for a moment. What you do for yourself depends on what you think of yourself. And what you think of yourself comes from where? Generally from those who are around you and give you feedback on who you are and, and uh, what you think of yourself. And what you think of yourself depends upon what you know about yourself. What do you know about yourself in terms of your history. What do you know about yourself beyond your mom and daddy, your grandparents, okay? And what you know about yourself depends upon what you've been told about yourself. Okay, so that's where we are today. Who are you? It's important that children have a good sense of who they are. And for young children, that, that's, that basically comes from those who are in their immediate environment, the family. You know, they look around and look at people who look like them. And so that's, that, that, commu that communicates something to the young child about who you are. So why am I on this particular topic today? Well, you know, part of my thinking as a professor has to do with assembling pieces. You ever put together a puzzle? You know, so you get one of those thousand piece puzzles. You look at you look at all the pieces that seemingly relate to each other, you put them in one pile. You get those pieces that don't seem to make sense or anything, you put those in another pile. Then you begin assembling those pieces. And after a while, the puzzle begins to make some sense. And so with young children, they're looking around them, trying to figure out who are these people? <laughs> how do I relate to them and how do, how do they relate to me? And so what's, what's, uh, what's important is that, and I've said this before, in most families, the focal parent is the mother, the mama. She is the one who basically does most of the parenting, not that daddies can't do what mothers do, but the mother is generally the focal parent. And mothers, as a rule, exhale when they see that their children are learning those things that's gonna make them successful in school. A lot of children are coming to school ill-prepared. I don't wanna get into a whole uh, thing looking at data that supports that, but a lot of children are coming to school ill-prepared for school, but we can fix that. We can fix that. And it has to do with what I call uh, certain routines that you help children to develop. Four things. And those four things are helping children to learn to pay attention, helping them to learn to listen, 
helping them to follow directions and helping them to start a task till it is completed. Four things, pay attention, listen, follow directions, start and complete a task. And that's repeated over and over and over until it becomes part of your memory bank, till it becomes second nature. Well, paying, well then, then you have to understand something about what does it take for an infant to pay attention? Well, you have those kinds of artifacts in front of the child that they attend to, mobiles, other things that captures their attention. And as they get older, you know, you keep, you keep changing the stimulus that gathers their attention. And then as you're talking to them, you wanted them to listen to what, you, what it is that you're saying. For example, no. When a mother says to a child, no. No generally has to do with them not doing something that could endanger them. No, we don't do that. No, whatever. So again, there are certain universal words that you want them to respond to. And you do, you do things that captures their attention um, as they're listening to you. Then you want them to follow directions. Well, following directions has to do with what are the things that uh, commands their attention to follow directions. Well, understanding what's appropriate for a six month old would be a little different for uh, an 18 month old or two year old. But you want, you want those things that captures the children's attention that enables them to follow simple commands that you give, turn the page, put this in this hole, place this over here. And then you see if they're able to do what you're asking them to do. Okay, now let me fast forward a little bit. You're asking them to take a, let's say three pieces, a circle, a triangle and a square. And like you have a pegboard, you ask them to put the circle in the hole that's appropriate for the circle. You have them to put the triangle in the place that's appropriate for the triangle. And you have them to put the square in the, in the, in the uh, hole that's appropriate. Take them out, do it again. And it becomes fun to them. They laugh. Children laugh at doing it. They look at you and look away. And sometimes they're, they're in, they, will, in, they will put the, the right thing in the wrong place and vice versa. They want to see if you're paying attention to them as well. So it becomes a game. And so as they, as they are able to do these things, then the complexity of it just increases. And then what you're also building are skills Inadvertently, you are building skills where they are paying attention and can start a task and uh, fulfill a task. They are also paying attention to you giving them instructions of what to do. So again, these are four things that will make them uh, functional. Because in school, teachers are always trying to get their attention. So if they, if they understand the command, of paying attention, they do it automatically. There are things that they have to do according to their ability to listen. Teachers sometimes give instructions that have two or three tasks in it. Their ability to hear what's being asked and execute that means that they have those listening skills that are needed to be successful. Then as they're progressing, whether it's in infant care, toddler care, preschool care, kindergarten, primary, the elementary or middle, middle grades, you have to pay attention. <laughs> you have to listen. You have to follow directions. You have to start and finish certain tasks. In addition, you learn to work with others and you still are carrying out some of the same tasks. Now, what, what does that mean? What that essentially means is as they, as they are doing these things, the children are also gaining confidence in, in, them, in, 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 in themselves in terms of their ability to do certain things. And the more confidence they gain, the more they're able to execute and the 
they're just widening their knowledge base and widening their skills. Let me back up. Remember I started out by saying, who are you? Well, as, as children uh, develop and they get to the point that they are able to interact and engage, who they are has a lot to do with the kinds of conversations that you have with them. And in, and in having these conversations, you are always affirming them, okay? You're always affirming them that you love them, you care for them, and you're giving them feedback based upon what they do. Does everything always have to be positive? No, but it depends upon what you say and how you say it to them in terms of how they take it in. Nobody wants to be beat up on, okay? Nobody wants to be beat up on. But there are times that you, want, you, you will need to correct them. And you can correct them with affirmation. So it's it's important, and this goes back to them feeling good about who they are as a person. Now, the more confidence that you have in yourself, the more you are willing to step out and do things in and to 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 uh, ensure that you are gaining the knowledge and skills. And the way that you look at them says a lot to them. The way that you, I mean, for example, a lot of, uh, we, 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 we raised two children. And a lot of my feedback to my children was nonverbal. They could look at my facial expression and my facial expression said, you don't do that or you do that. My facial expression was, was, would, would, would uh, say to them that was acceptable or not. And then I would, I would always embrace them, always embrace them. They knew that whether they were successful in completing a task or not had nothing to do with the amount of love. Love was unconditional, okay? So once they, and again, once they internalize these kinds of things, there's a, there's a willingness on their part to venture out as they're gaining self-confidence. Early on, I talked about what you do for yourself depends upon what you think about yourself. In his book, Know Thyself, Naeem Akbar says, the best education is knowledge of self. That's the best education, knowledge of self. Who am I? Where did I come from? Where am I going? And in his book, when he talks about knowledge itself, it's, he, 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 he talks about many years before Europeans started dominating stuff, many nations were going to Africa because Africa was pretty much, it had, it had developed civil, civilizations. And so our history doesn't begin as America often portrays us. So self-knowledge. What's the origin of me? What's the origin of my family? And where did we all come from? So that self-knowledge has a lot to do with how we think about ourselves and what people tell us about ourselves. And the more we can learn about ourselves and the more affirmations that we can get from our parents about ourselves helps us to develop um, a good sense of, of uh, who I am as, as an individual. And who I am as, as an individual says a lot to me about the things that I will go out of my way to do and, and so forth and so on. Um, Self-knowledge within, within a family construct is passed on from one generation to the next. The thing that I miss is not being around my grandchildren because I lived around my grandmother. My grandmother saw me sometimes all day, every day. And I was always curious having her tell me stories about the family as far back as she can go in her memory. So remember the, the definition of what you think about yourself depends upon what you're told about yourself. So self-knowledge is absolutely uh, critical.
Remember the opening statement on this podcast was, who are you? And the feedback that you get from family members and others says a lot about yourself. Affirmation from parents says a lot about you. Um, when you talk about uh, confidence, your self-confidence is built on the feedback that you get from your immediate caretakers or parents. Yeah, this podcast is uh, this is the latter part of the month of February, and it's always in, in this country uh, Black History Month. And um, Black history, with respect to who we are, should not be contained within 28 days or depending upon the year, 29 days. Black history has to become some of what we live, some of what we live. And with our young children as a parent, I would, I would encourage you to um, expose your children to books, artifacts, and things that they can look at and begin developing a connection with those things. There's a curriculum that's put out by CIBI, the Council for Independent Black Institutions. I love it. In it, they look at the family. They look at members in the family and help children to understand the different roles and functions that family members play. They help, they help children to understand the connection between relationships, peers, brothers and sisters. They look at the help, they help young children to understand the connection of mother and father, husband and wife. And, it's, and they, start this, they start this out uh, at the age of 18, when children are beginning to acquire language skills you know, they, 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 they're listening all, all along, but as they begin to speak, you know, and so what I'm saying, all that to say goes back to the opening statement, who are you? And the constant feedback that you're getting depends upon who you get it from and how they share that with you. So again, within the family construct of these black homes, children to see things that they can relate to pictures, books, stories, and, and so forth and so on. So let black history be something that goes beyond February. Let black history be, become a part of all their living and things that they do. So with that, uh, until next week, we'll come back with another topic. But remember my book, From Roots to Wings, revisit it. It's a parent's guide for academic and cultural excellence. You can look at my website, drjamesyoung.com, and you can uh, have access to those books and other things that I will be sharing on that website. In addition, um, you're going to see the first newsletter that will come out, and it just supports what will be going on in the podcast. I want to close out by saying thank you for listening. And you can find me featured on a recent episode of Sheila Speaks podcast with Sheila James. That's it for today on Chats with Baba.